I'm dealing with label politics at the same time. Oh. No, McConaughey's chained up at the fucking label over here. Can't drop shit. So he's pissed off. Pissed off. Pissed off. Butter. <laughs> Butter. What goes up must come down. A Drake cosign could be a blessing and a curse. That cosign could turn you from a nobody to a star overnight. But with that cosign, you now got the shadow of the biggest rapper right behind you. I love McConaughey as someone who notably received that cosign and to add on the pressure he even signed to OVO. A staple of the Atlanta underground scene that music nerds like myself were aware of back when Molly stopped being sold. But where did it go wrong? What happened when Tuesday is over and it's now Wednesday? Let's talk about how signing to the wrong label can derail your whole career. In this vid, we're going to cover the career, the fall and rise and fall of I Love McConey. That sentence is going to make more sense when you hear the story. Let's get it. Man of the day, man of the night, man of the year. Often referred as an Atlanta rapper, McConey was actually born in South Los Angeles, California. McConey then moved to Atlanta until 2002 when he was 13 years old. Around that time, his mom got him a keyboard and McConey would start making beats. And some of his music seeds would be planted. His original goal was to make beats that Young Jeezy, who was in his prime at the time, would rap on. But of course that didn't happen. The music for him was mostly a hobby at that time. Other than that, he was a fairly regular kid. The keyboard yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And um, I have always used to, uh, you know, would love for another rapper or somebody to get on the beats. But it's like, how they gonna get on your beats out the room? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> so. With music not being his main goal, McCone graduated high school and was actually supposed to go to the Air Force. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. In June 2007, when McConey was 18 years old, a day after his graduation, he was enjoying his last few days in the city before going to the Air Force. And an unfortunate accident occurred in which one of his younger friends was killed, and McConey was wrongly implicated in an alleged murder facing up to 25 years in prison. Not to get into all the details and respect for the family who lost someone, but essentially, they were playing with a gun and a bullet hit the young man and the young man passed away. Police believed it was an accident, but the family of the young man that was killed didn't believe it was an accident, which made the situation more complex for McConey. He spent over two years on house arrest before the case was eventually dropped. Unfortunate situation, um, one of my friends died, like, the day after high school, one of my best friends, and um, just some shit with, you know, guns and wrong place, wrong time, you know, I won't go into the details, but, you know, just, um... I don't know, I feel like them guns is a negative energy, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, if your energy ain't strong enough to control that or know exactly what that is, you know, some crazy shit will happen, and that's kind of what happened. Left depressed and alone from the situation, on house arrest, McConaughey would start a blog called The Newness as a way to heal and come back from that situation, where he interviewed notable artists like Lil B and Miguel way before they blew up. Fun fact, short thing about Miguel leaked two years before his first album came out. That's kind of crazy. Anyway. Seeing them gain success inspired him to start putting out music himself on MySpace at that time. After his release from house arrest, McCona was sentenced to five years of probation, and in this period, he would start to make more of his own music. You know, music you has always been a part of my program, but when I, I was on house arrest, I had time to sit at my keyboard and be in my room and away from people, and nobody gave a fuck about me, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And I could just be with myself, me and my dogs. In his time, he attended cosmetology school, which inspired the branding of his music, with the mannequin that he uses often. In 2011 and 12, McConey would start taking his own solo music more serious. Similar to Lil B, all his music would be DIY, from the recordings to the videos. This led him to meet his manager, Presley Snipes, from Brooklyn, New York, a key figure in his story, so remember that. He would quit his job to pursue music full time and start traveling to different cities doing shows, networking, promo runs. And he started the Drink More Water series that a lot of people know him for. It's my first New York trip ever. Woo! Yeah! Woo! I've always wanted to come to New York. You know, New York City, I've always just had a connection with. McConaughey music had no in between. It was either trash to you or it was fire. It was early in the alternative trap. Like Atlanta had that wave going, awful records and key. A bunch of more guys, it was just a wave growing. Him putting out music eventually led to Mike Will finding his music. The two relationships strained quickly because the music McConaughey was making, Mike Will didn't want to put out for unknown reasons. McConaughey words, he wanted his shit on the low and quiet and being swagjacked by Future and all the other artists he worked with. I'm saying, this like my man's from who I've been doing my music with from the jump. Okay, I, I, I 
Yeah, I mean, through Mike Will, Makona got a publishing deal through Warner as a songwriter to get songs placed. But it wasn't working out until he met Metro Boomin and Sunny Digital. You know what I'm saying? Makona was slick like a like a um a long lost brother that we had been looking for type of thing though to put into the circle, and he just fit right in though. You know what I'm saying? Just fit right in. We just. He, he fucked with us when we fucked with him. McCona had I Don't Sell Molly No More and wanted Mike Will to put the song on his mixtape, Mike Will Ben Trill. But Mike Will wasn't feeling the song. So McCona took it to Sunny Digital, reworked the drums, put it out, and it gave him his first song that garnered some real hype. In a short period of time, McCona was recording at one take and just knocking songs out, maneuvering and Tuesday being the most notable. It did. Nah, we just one taking songs, next song, one take, next song, once. Just like, we just excited, bro. Mm -hmm. And we were working on the EP, and we had put that out a little bit, and it started like bubbling in the, uh, you know, like in the streets in Atlanta and through the music industry, and the song was just, you know, catching off. On the underground level, those records was moving, and Drake, who was super tapped in into the underground, called Sunny Digital to remix one of the songs. Like, man, I don't know why you asked me for, like, shit. <laughs> Man, let me call you right back. Let me call McConaughey right quick. And Sonny hit me up like, yo, McConaughey Drake said he want to get on song. I was like, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even, you know, know Drake. We, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, he a, he a famous artist and shit. But it was like, that's dope. If you can make that happen, Sonny, you know, you the man. The original Tuesday was released in March 2014. It was then remixed by Drake in August 2014. Went over to my friend's house and we were chilling and then like somebody tweeted me Drake and McCona's song would be fire or is fire and I was like yeah that would be dope and then somebody uh, tweeted me the link and then I was like no way you know yeah so I played it for my friends and shit and then I heard you know my chorus and shit and I was like oh this is probably somebody just gonna add an old Drake verse you know. <laughs> yeah. From that point on everything started moving fast. People who never wanted to work with you now want to work. Labels who wouldn't even look your way now call and assign you. So here comes some nerd talk. It's just some nerd talk coming. I'm just a warning. OVO originally offered McConan a single deal, which is useful for artists at his level because that would waive Drake's high ass feature perks. Every label wanted to sign McConan at that point. McConan had two deals on the table where he could keep his old catalog up, or the OVO deal where you get the Draco sign, but all the prior catalog gotta go. He chose OVO. Something his manager didn't like. Time it was buzzing. We talking seven, eight, nine albums in, and albums up there. And who has ten albums other than G O G's? These motherfuckers convinced him to take his own music down. That's when I knew he was lost. That's when I knew this motherfucker was lost. Conan now, now McConan got a hit produced by us. You know what I'm saying? But he signed to Mike Will and shit mm -hmm. though. OVO trying to get him. Mike Will trying to get him. Mm -hmm. So it's like you know. What, what else I'm gonna do? Like, I'm gonna go sign a big deal somewhere else and have to pay Drake for the feature over the song he, you know what I'm saying, like remix song. I was like, I'm just gonna, you know, be loyal to him and like <clears throat> work with them. And so that's how I ended up getting signed. Everybody attributes McCona's fall off to him coming out the closet. But that's simply not true, gang. It's a thing these days when an artist blow up, the internet will go find your old tweets. For example, Glorilla blew up, she signed to Yo Gotti, and they found old tweets of her dissing Yo Gotti. In McConan old tweets, he was dissing his new boss, Drake. I end up like telling him like, bro, it wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, and so um, I knew it's like, then he was like, all right. You know, I could tell it was like hurtful because I was like, damn, like, you know what I mean? I'm just making little jokes. Strike one, but the two was able to smooth past it. Tuesday peaked at number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. Anytime a song is that big in rap, other rappers are going to remix it. Troy Ave being one of those artists at that time. Troy, who was cool with OVO Johnny Rocks, who was Drake's personal trainer, and from the same neighborhood as McCona's manager. McCona got on Twitter and sneaked this Troy for remixing the song, which led to an incident happening when McCona was performing in New York and was pulled off stage. You disrespect somebody who embraced you from my neighborhood. I mean, you know, I mean a lot to my city, and I know a bunch of people, I'll be around a lot of people. You didn't know that Drake's personal trainer was cool with Troy Ave. Strike two, but all was cool until Drake invited McConan to the studio at his house. McConan brought his manager, Prez Snipes, and his assistant, Marcus Daniels. McConan's ex manager alleges that McConan's assistant was actually his boyfriend. Hey, yo. And while Drake and McConan was in the studio, the assistant came in the studio and started fanning out for Drake. Drake was visibly confused and ended the studio session early. So, um,. I'm hyped, I'm like, hell, I'm about to make a song with another song with Drake. Like, we about to get enough, we about to get these hits. I'm like, yeah, I finally fucking made it. I'm about to get paid. 
So we sitting inside the um, Drake's studio, and all of a sudden, McCona's gay boyfriend walks in. I'm just like, yo, I'm thinking to myself, why the fuck did he bring this guy with us? He walks in with his fucking Speedos on. So I'm just like, oh, fuck. I hope Marcus don't say nothing stupid. I'm just like, why the fuck did you bring this guy, McCona? That's what I'm thinking, but I don't see nothing. So then Drake look at me like, well, he's sitting right across from me. He look at me. Make a long story short, that was the last time I went to Drake's house. They I never seen I never seen Drake again after that. After that studio session, Drake and McCona communication was limited. McCona in early 2015 music was put out, and OVO didn't even acknowledge it. Him and his team started to bump heads. And he alleges that once he fired Prayer Snipes, Prayers hacked his Twitter and sent out tweets dissing OVO. Me and my uh, manager at the time was falling out, but he still had like my accounts on certain accounts. And so he had my Tumblr account. And so my Tumblr was connected to like my Twitter and all that shit at the time. And so when I was on tour, he had tweeted out, um, you know, fuck Drake, fuck OVO, all this shit. Like they some fucking lame ass motherfuckers for not putting out my my mixtape or this and that and fuck Rihanna for not uh jumping on my album and all that just you know just saying fuck everybody because I was just at the Grammys and like kind of just like around everybody and everybody was in only being signed for a little over a year McCona last project under OVO will be in November 2015 he was officially dropped from the label in spring of 2016 and was sent to the main label that distributes OVO Warner Records after getting dropped McConaughey wanted to drop another project on streaming platforms until 2021, last one being Drink More Water 6 in 2016. After getting dropped, McConaughey sent multiple shots at Drake and OVO. I'm the real plug, nigga. Come and test who? Yeah, motherfucker said I got dropped. Views from the, or what's, what's that nigga album? What's that dumbass album with the sky shit? Uh, to take care or some shit? <laughs> I don't care. Why you leave OVO? Cuz I was underweight now. When I was overweight, they were fucking with me. That's what OVO stands for, overweight only. Top of 2017, McCona revealed in a Twitter rant that in August of 2016, McCona ran into Drake at a VMA after party. Drake told him, next time we see you, I'ma fuck you up. He was obviously irritated by all the antics that McCona did after he was dropped. In that same rant, McCona would come out the closet as homosexual. I mean, I wasn't surprised by it even. As a guy who listened to him, I mean, when I found out he did hair, it kind of was like, oh, okay. You canceled my boy. Migos called it whack. They said he came in the game talking about trapping and selling Molly, doing all that. That's whack, bro. I'm from Atlanta. Migos from Atlanta. Everybody from Atlanta know what time it is in Atlanta. You what? know what I'm saying? So that, it's like, 100%. it ain't nothing to be said. And so it's like, since that time, McCona had a resurgence when working with late rappers like Juice World and Lil Peep on multiple songs. He was supposed to do a collab album with Lil Peep titled Diamonds, but it never happened due to Lil Peep passing and his estate not releasing it. So, you know what I'm saying? It was like he was so happy about that you see him like clips of his last like beats interview. He's so excited about the album and stuff. So, it was something we were both very passionate about. And then the person that I'm doing this with passes away. So, it's like. He had a beef for academics sassy and looking you know what i'm saying real upset like that it's like every time i see you on a twitch stream which is rare because i don't be watching it's like you look so lonely by yourself drinking hennessy listening to songs talking about this and talking about that and it's like girl go get a life go get y'all gotta pay birdman 400 grand y'all gotta pay republic a couple hundred grand you were broke you couldn't do that nigga so you know what he had to do sign you for the time being <clears throat> to OVO Records because he had a pass to release records with those niggas without the charges. He signed you for the one record and tossed you away like the garbage and filth you fucking were, you worthless piece of crack rock smoking shit. And he recently dropped a song with NBA Youngboy. But sadly, McCona's career never recovered. It's just been crazy. So I was just putting it all throughout in the music. And so it's like, I'm not getting really no push at the label. So I'm like trying to fight to get off the label from 2016 to 2020. And then I just got off the label 2020. And by that, it's like, of course you don't have no, ain't nobody checking for you. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm over here doing my independent thing. And I just put out like some projects and I put them out on, on uh, iTunes and Spotify and DistroKid. And you know, my the core fans love it. 
but it's like it ain't getting no support from the industry, nobody. You know what I mean? Like don't nobody fuck with my shit. The music business is a tough hang, bro. It's all about relationships and when you burn a relationship with the guy that everybody like wants to work with and the guy that everybody is trying to be bigger than it's over bro and it don't even have to be stated like i don't feel like drake probably went behind doors and was like hey don't mess with makona it was probably more like i'm cool on him so in turn everybody else is cool on him i really don't think it has nothing to do with him coming out the closet i just think that relationship itself never grew to a point where drake was gonna overlook some of the antics or some of the ways McCone was moving and it's sad because he worked his ass off just to reach that moment like look what bro overcame you overcame house arrest false accusations and isolation depression and shit just all for it to get taken away because when you when you when your relationships ain't right in this business bro it's gonna go it's like playing with LeBron you start missing threes you start missing layups you're on the trade block am I lying just being real they gonna send you to a team where the coach ain't gonna give you minutes in this case McCona got sent to a label where they didn't know what to do with him they just put him on the shelf hey come back to us when you got a hit it's fucked up with that being said if you like this video please like and subscribe if you hate this video you hate me you hate McCona or maybe you be acting like Boosie I'm totally joking dislike this video though and subscribe it's around butter and the moral of the story is Bro, don't even bring bro to the studio. I just might pull up on your pack and sell that. Young niggas be talking shit, but love my drill, they smell that. Call me on my old funders, nigga, I can't.